Hey guys, uh, so what do we have uh, for today's video? Uh, well, if you can read, which I'm sure most of you can, this is a Sony TC-K461S uh, that I found locally uh, via OfferUp. Um, and it's it's in the box and it's in pretty good shape. Um, so what is this? Well, this is a stereo cassette deck. So uh, let me take it out of the box and uh, so you can get a better look. All right, here we go. Now I hope my lighting uh, isn't too bad so that you can see this, but yeah, this is a cassette deck. Now, I've never been someone that would be considered like an audiophile. That was usually pretty low on my list of priorities. Um, like for computer games, of course, I loved looking at the different audio cards and getting the best ones in the MIDI modules for games and stuff like that. But uh, as far as music listening, which I, uh, I don't listen to as much music as I used to, but yeah, I was real big into um, music, and I still do listen to music. I I've never really been an audiophile. I never went for the high-end stuff. It was just a tape was a tape, a CD was a CD, and, you know, streaming music off YouTube or MP3s or whatever. It was just what it is. Um, but lately, thanks to videos uh, with some retro audio tech, uh, mostly from uh, VW Westlife and Technomone and stuff, I've really been getting more into this facet of retro technology and uh, I really love it because it's just something new to learn uh, something some more things to look out for at Goodwill and thrifts and just like I said just more retro tech stuff that I love just that I stuff to discover and um, just stuff to learn I love learning about this stuff so um, I've been picking up a lot more of this stuff lately and uh, I really did want to start focusing on cassette decks and cassette stuff because uh, you know growing up 80s and 90s uh, cassettes were still very much a part of the culture of the time uh, of course we had CDs um, through most of the 90s uh, you know I remember CDs big time uh, but you know we still used cassettes a good bit back then uh, even in the 90s like I said in my uh, boombox video I I was making mixtapes on cassettes uh, in the late 90s in high school. So uh, I wanted to get a decent cassette deck here. Um, so this, I don't think this is like a super high-end cassette deck, but it does have one specific feature that I really like, uh, which isn't too common, which I'm gonna show you guys if you don't see already now. This deck is in great shape. Uh, I don't even know if it was ever used, to be honest. Um, cosmetically, it's perfect, uh, almost perfect. It's still got the little nude decals, um, it's just, I didn't even see, there's some like prints on it, but that's from me. So, uh, the box didn't have all the documentation and stuff, but I don't think this thing was ever used. So who knows, uh, how long this thing was sitting in a box. Uh, I don't know the year on this. I guess, I guess I should look that up. All right. I looked it up. This thing came out in 1996. So not super, well, yeah, pretty light in the cassette deck uh, era. Oh, and by the way, as for people that have gotten me into this kind of thing with their videos lately, it's, it's, uh, V West life, not VW West life. Sorry, dude. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, okay. Let's, let's look at this thing a little bit closer. Now, one thing, uh, when you're looking at cassette decks, especially on, like Craigslist and stuff, you'll notice a lot of them are dual cassette decks. And I'm guessing that's because, you know, you put one in and then you record just do uh, copies. Um, this one's just a single one. I wasn't really looking for a single. I just wanted one, uh, a high, kind of a higher end one. I wasn't really looking for anything too specific. But uh, I don't know who it was, but I do remember a YouTube kind of mentioning offhand that the single decks tend to be better than the double decks. Now, now I can't confirm that. I, I don't know where he got the information. I haven't seen that anywhere except from what he said. Uh, I guess it might make some sense that like, you know, it's a player with two maybe f a little bit more focused on making copies or whatnot, where a single is just, it can focus purely on playing music and getting the best sound out of it, or maybe it, there's less stuff to break down. I don't know. I don't know if there's any validity to that, but uh, I did hear that ones with one cassette with one deck instead of like two uh, are a little bit better. So uh, let's take a look at this thing. It's not, it's nice metal. Um, it's not like super thick here, but it's, it's still nice. I think this is plastic. Uh, I know some of the real high end stuff is like all aluminum. Um, I do believe this is plastic, but this is metal right there. So um, let's take a look at this thing, closer look. All right, so again, I hope the lighting is working. I apologize if it doesn't look 
uh, perfect here. Now here's the main thing I wanted uh, this for. Dolby S. Now, Dolby S is a form of noise reduction, which gets rid of, you know, hisses and background noise in your cassette tapes. And um, S is the best one. Uh, it it I, uh, properly recorded with a with the proper cassette, uh, higher end cassette, and uh, using Dolby S, you can get uh, about as good as a CD would sound. So with the right equipment and the right recording method and whatnot. Unfortunately, there isn't like a studio production or cassettes you go out to the store and buy that were done in Dolby S. Uh, as far as I know, most of those are in Dolby B, uh, which is decent. I believe the original one was just called Dolby Noise Reduction, then there's BC, and then finally S. But um, as far as like commercial uh, music that you'd go to the store and buy on cassette, like albums and stuff, I believe most of those were done in Dolby B. I don't believe any were ever put out in C or S. I'm almost sure none were ever put out in S. So uh, it's mostly for, you know, like personal recordings. If you're recording uh, from a CD or an MP3 to cassette or something like that, or, or from a, from cassette to cassette or whatever, but Dolby S uh, is the best one. And you can get some really good sounding uh, music on cassettes using Dolby S. So down here we have our standard functions for the, uh, for the cassette here. We have, um, stop, rewind, play, fast forward, and then these little buttons here are pause, uh, record, mute, and record. Record, mute, and record. I'm not, I guess, well there's record. I don't know what the difference between record, mute, and record is unless uh, you record it in, in uh, nothing, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, like I said, I am a pretty much an amateur with this stuff, so I am learning, um, and it, I'm learning about this stuff uh, pretty much as I do these videos on it. So um, here would be our little the display screen, and then we have a counter here. We have reset and memory. Um, so I think that would be the counter, like where you are in the cassette. So we move over here, and here's where you put the cassette itself in, and a little bit over some more. Here's our eject button. It's a nice separate eject button. Nice smooth action. So I know that's a thing. There's like you can tell the quality of the player by how slowly the door opens. That's that's not bad. Nice smooth action there. Um, right here we have MPX filter on and off. It's just a push button. Uh, do not know what MPX filter is. And then here's our Dolby noise reduction. So this is where you would choose your uh, noise reduction that you'd want to use. So the thing is, you want to match up uh, the cassette with whatever noise reduction was used. So it's not like if you record something in Dolby S and you put it in a player that only works with Dolby B noise reduction, it's not gonna sound like Dolby S. You wanna match them up. So if you have like for instance, I have a cassette player in my car, and um, it's uh, Dolby Noise Reduction B. If I record something on S and then play it in there, it will still sound okay, but it might sound a little bit weird. Uh, I've heard they sound kind of tinny when you do that. So you'd want to record it B and then play it in a B player, or a player that you can set to B, as far as I understand. But I like how this is a, a mechanical switch. It just, it's awesome. There, there's off, and then we have B, C and S. So I really like how you can hear it. I, I love stuff like that. I love the switches and the with you know the mechanical sound and um, I love the flashing lights and stuff like that. Uh, so um, let's look over here a little bit more. Okay, so here we have auto calibration. Again, not 100% sure what that is. I suppose this would calibrate your uh, cassette. Um, Here's the record level. Maybe that's something for the sound, the noise when you're recording it. Um, balance, headphone jack, and uh, down here it says Dolby BCS noise reduction. It also does HX Pro. Again, I, I'm not sure what HX Pro is. Uh, I believe from what I was reading, it's something if like you're recording off the radio, it gets rid of more different kind of background noise. So. Apparently I was completely wrong about what HX Pro is. Um, it's not noise reduction, it does not use compression or expansion, it's a technique uh, blah, developed by Dolby Labs to increase tape headroom di by decreasing the bias when recording signals with large high frequency components. I have no idea what any of that means, but um, that's, that's what it is apparently. 
Um, and Dolby HX tapes can be played back on any system with no decrease in quality. So uh, that's what that is, I guess. So that's also something uh, nice to have. So let's take a look at the back really quick. Not too much to this thing. Uh, again, it's really nice. I don't think this thing was ever used. Um, not much on the back. Uh, we just have line in and out, uh, stereo, RCA, and then the power cord is attached. So I'm going to uh, plug this thing in and, well, you'll see. All right, so we have her plugged in now and I'm going to hit the power button. And it makes a pretty horrible noise <laughs> and you can see the display has lit up here. Um, now the reason, now I have opened this prior, um, so I do know, I, at least I have a really good idea of what's wrong. And what's wrong is a very common problem and the belts have deteriorated. Um, so, uh, th this problem, I mean it happens all the time with things that use belts like turntables and uh, VCRs and cassette decks. Uh, so that's a really common problem and they tend to over time turn to just goo and they lose their elasticity. Um, this problem is kind of exasperated in areas like Arizona here where the heat I don't think helps that process. So even if this was never used and it stayed in that box, if someone stored it in you know like a shed outside that wasn't climate controlled and it's just it gets like an oven in there every day for god knows how long years maybe since 96 um yeah so the the belts inside it have turned to complete mush and goo um now actually just today uh from slovakia <laughs> don't ask me why i had to get it from so far away um i did get some replacement belts now there's a large one and a little one uh now here's the thing i've never repaired one of these before i i know virtually nothing about you know, I don't, I'm not even, I'm still learning about the consumer level stuff, let alone opening this and repairing it. Um, I've watched some videos and stuff, so I don't think it's too hard. It's just, it's basically just finding where that belt goes and putting it on. Um, so it's not rocket science. It's not rocket surgery here. Um, so I am going to give it a go, um, but I am not really confident. Um, I have no clue. It, if, if it was still on and it was just like the elasticity was gone, at least I could see where the belt was and I could just take it off and put the new one on, but it's it's completely melted away. So I'm not even sure where the belt goes. Um, now I know there's, uh, you know, like cogs and rollers, so it, it should be kind of obvious, um, at least for the big one. I don't have a clue where that little belt goes, um, but I'm fairly certain that is the problem. Hopefully there's no little cogs or anything that are snapped or broke. Um, that would be another level of uh, a problem, but considering the good shape this is in, uh, it's probably just those belts. So I am going to make a really amateur attempt at replacing the belts and hoping that fixes the problem. So thankfully I did find a service manual online that sort of tells me how to put the bands on, um, but it, it still doesn't instill me with a great amount of confidence. Okay, so here we have the player uh, with the uh, top case off. Now, you only need to unscrew, there's four screws um, that you have to unscrew to lift it off. Now, there are some screws here on the back, and uh, I originally had some trouble lifting the case off, but it, it has nothing to do with these screws um, on the back here. These just kind of connect the board and stuff. You just... Uh, you need to do the four on the side, but it is a little bit tricky. You have to kind of like pull it back and up a little bit. Uh, it could be a little bit of effort. Um, so here's the inside, and uh, it's it's beautiful inside. There's no dust. Again, I don't really think this thing was ever used. There's just there's just no dust or anything. Uh, no, no, nothing really. Um, so pretty simple inside here. Not a whole lot. Uh, this looks like a little ground thing that was here. Um, so here's the main board. Uh, the caps all kind of look okay. I believe that's the power. Um, what we really need to focus on is this thing. And I believe it's somewhere back in there those two belts need to go. Um, it looks really simple, uh, but I have no idea what I'm doing here. So I'm guessing I have to undo these screws. There's another one down there. 
another one there on the other side. So there's four screws. Um, and I probably need to pull this whole thing back. I think. Um, I'm not sure if I need to. I don't know. I guess I'll just dive into it and see what happens. All right. So I'm just looking at. You can see part of the belt that like melted and fell off uh, right there. And man, this thing never focuses when I need it to. Um, and then you can. I can still see up here. Nope. Oh. Yeah, so right down there, there's some of the belt that kind of like melted and fell apart and fell off uh, right there. And then up there, I can still see some belt uh, right there. Um, I don't know if that's all the same belt or that's that one is that's the little one and that's the big one that's disintegrated. So uh, it helps give me a kind of a rough idea here. So I think these black like knobs that aren't doing anything I think I put the belt around like there's probably something on the other side I put it around and then I bring it over and I put it on those and then when I put this thing back on it I push it up and I pop it onto that little plastic thing there uh, I'm thinking so like I said I guess I'm not really gonna know until I actually take the thing apart and try so uh, let me see if I can get this yeah, it's here. There's the belt. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's like putty uh, at this point. It's just completely uh, not a belt anymore. So, all right. Now I think I can see the smaller one right there, and it looks okay so far. But that's, I'm glad I can see it here because I was really worried because I didn't know where it went. Um, so. Uh, but I can replace. I can probably replace it now that I can actually visibly see where it goes. So that one down there must all be the uh, the bigger uh, belt. So I disconnected this and that little power doggle down there, and I took out some screws. I'm just not quite sure how to lift this out. Um, I don't know. It looks like it's connected right here. These two black things, and then it's connected with these little plastic tabs. Um, which is annoying, so I don't know. I guess I'll just have to wiggle it around and see what happens. All right, so after looking at it a bit more, I've decided to disconnect everything because um, I think I'm gonna have to take this faceplate off. I believe there's like two screws underneath I have to unscrew and just take this whole front off. And that will give me, you know, that will make me be able to access the screws and um, I just think I have to do that anyway, so I'll give that a try. Hopefully all this taken apart and messing around, I don't break anything, so uh, I guess we'll just see how it goes. All right, so yeah, here's the front panel uh, broken away from the rest of it. It was actually uh, five screws uh, on the underside. Just kind of be careful wiggling it and pulling away if you're doing this too, because there's some uh, semi-delicate parts that you, know, you could snap. Um, don't forget to disconnect this guy right here. Um, so now I guess it's just unscrewing these screws here and I think I just I think this is in like two parts and I think I only have to remove this top part should come off and then I can have I'll have access to where the belts are and then theoretically I just figure out where the belts go swap them and then put everything back together I hope I hope there's no more disassembly um, so uh, we'll see. Alright so here it is in two pieces. Now I assume this is as far as I need to go with this assembly because I can tell where some of the, I think that little little smaller belt uh, also melted away. It was <laughs> When I pulled everything away it just broke and like melted and um, so you can see like remnants of it there. Um, remnants of here and here. It, it's pretty gross. Um, now all that black residue, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's just grease, um, so I don't think, I, it's probably not in my best interest to wipe that off, but it's hard to tell what's grease and what is melted gooey belt. Um, so now it's just figuring out how the belts attach. Um, now it looks like one maybe attaches to this and then over to here, and then maybe the smaller one attaches to this and then something else. That, that's going to be the tricky part for me. Um, just figuring out what little sprockets these belts attach to. Um, 
and then putting it back together shouldn't be any problem at all, but uh, I guess now my challenge is just figuring out where the belts go, so uh, I'm going to poke around and see if I can figure out anything. Yeah, that, it, it, it completely melted onto this thing right here, uh, to the point that I'm almost wondering if it's grease or not, but it can't be grease, because that's definitely where the belt goes, but it's... I'm trying to use like rubbing alcohol and um, Q-tips, but it's like really melted on there into like disgusting meltedness. <laughs> um, other than that, I'm really still not sure where the belts go. Um, I think one goes here, and then there's another spot here where it should go. Uh, I think right there it looks like another belt track, but uh, um, so I think the big belt maybe goes from there there but that doesn't seem right um i don't know and then the little belt i think goes on that but then i don't know where it attaches to so i'm i'm really confused as to how the belts attach plus it's harder because it's in like two pieces so i can't just and then i know what these little progs are for is like you attach the belt and then you put them on this and then i think when you reattach the two pieces you can slide in a screwdriver and like slip it up onto the the things, I don't know, I gotta examine the um, service manual a little bit more. Uh, like I said, I, I haven't ever done this before, so I'm, I am really out of my element here with uh, with this, but I'll, I'm gonna keep trying to clean this up and then I'm gonna just mess around with the belts and uh, hopefully I can eventually figure it out. All right, so I think I have the, the basics here. Um, I think this one, this the, the square belt goes around here and then when I reconnect it, it's gonna, connect around there, although I, I'm not sure how to pull that off uh, once they go back together. I don't know if I put it on this first and then reattach it and then slide it onto that or the other way around. Um, this one I think is pretty straightforward. It goes on this big old thingamabob <laughs> and then it goes down and attaches to these, there's these three spokes sticking out and then I think once I reattach the top um, I poke a screwdriver and I just push it up and slide it onto this, which I've cleaned the best I can, though. It seems when that goo gets on this plastic here, it just, it doesn't come off. It's not, it's not sticky anymore, but it discolored it. Um, so I think I got the, the big belt, uh, okay, but it's just, I'm worried about putting on this little one. It was a little bit tricky getting it down in there and on the, the track. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see how it goes. So... I noticed another one of those little spokes here, uh, so I'm gonna actually try it the other way. I took this the square belt off and I put it on this little one and hooked it on that, uh, just kind of like the big one is said to hook on these three. So maybe when I put on the top, I'll have to just do the same thing with that, and they'll just pop on to whatever they're supposed to, and uh, it will be ready to go. Hopefully, we'll see. So at this point you might be thinking, hey, what's going on? You were just putting the thing together and now it's sitting here all put back together. Well, I made a big mistake. <laughs> I, uh, my brain during the video somehow entered opposite land and for the last half of the video, uh, when I was thought I was recording, I actually wasn't. And when I thought I wasn't recording, I was recording. So all of the footage I did for the end of this video is useless. Um, and it's really a shame too because I did figure out uh, where we when I last last the video when I where we last left the video of me trying to fix the belts I was actually I was right with the big one but I was wrong with the little one and I figured it out and I got good footage of that and I was able to pop the belts onto the other little spinny things with a little screwdriver and I got good footage of that and it's all gone because I wasn't actually recording because. I guess my brain entered opposite land and I wasn't paying attention. So all that footage is nothing. It's just like footage of the floor and uh, the wall and stuff. So, <sighs> so you can't see me finishing up the belt repair, but let me tell you, I did figure it out. I did figure out the orientation and I did put everything together. Now, obviously I know right now if this thing is going to work or not, but for the sake of the video, let's pretend that uh, I don't know. So <laughs> I've put I put it all back together, I've reconnected everything, and I did replace the belts as best as I, I, I mean, it looks like they uh, work. So 
Um, I have this thing hooked up in the back. It's going out and it's going into my PC speakers. One, because it's really easy for me to do, and two, I don't really have a proper sound system, hi-fi system set up. Um, I'm working on it, uh, but sound was always kind of a low priority for me. Um, so, uh, I just have this hooked up to my PC speakers. So, hit the power. Now, as you hear, there isn't that horrible, weird grinding sound there was before I did the belt replacement. So, um, I don't want to get hit with a with a copyright thing. Um, but all I have, I you know, I don't have any like non copyright material stuff. So, what we're gonna do? We're gonna test. This is nine inch nails. This is the broken album, and I'm just gonna play it really quick just to show you guys if it works or not. Now, this was recorded in Dolby Noise Reduction B. Um, like most uh, production, you know, I guess cassettes you could buy at the store. So we want to set our player to B. And uh, let's see if it plays. Yes, uh, I did indeed fix it, and I'm really happy about that. Now, remember, the sound quality you just heard uh, probably isn't great for a couple reasons. One, it's PC speakers, which aren't the greatest, and they're way up there. Um, also, I, I probably should clean the heads, uh, maybe demagnetize them, although, like I said, I don't think this scene, thing has seen a lot of use. Um, I love these little light bar thingies that go up and down. Don't know why, I just love them. Uh, growing up, my dad was actually a musician, and he did a lot of like editing, and he, he was a keyboardist, and he did a lot of work um, like on an Amiga, and that's part of why I really got into Amiga. And uh, I just remember he had a lot of like um, editing, not so much editing equipment, but like, you know, audio stuff. Um, and I remember he had so many these little things that had like bars that go up and down, and maybe that's where I got my fascination with that <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, yes, it works. Um, so I, I do apologize, I'm really sorry I couldn't get footage of the last part, me figuring out where the belts go, because uh, there isn't really a, a guide uh, uh, for this particular model on YouTube. Uh, I just don't have the willpower to open it back up and redo that. Um, I'm sorry, uh, but it's not too hard. Uh, you can figure it out pretty easy. Um, don't if you could pick up one of these things and it's not working uh, and you find out it's the belts don't be intimidated by it uh, just give it a try like I said I never did this repair before I've never done repairs on a cassette player before I've never done a belt replacement and uh, I figured it out and it wasn't too hard um, it does help if you can find a service manual online and most of them seem to be online with a little checking it took me a little bit to find one for this player a lot of them are behind paywalls but um, if you keep looking, you can usually find the manual for free. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy that this is working now. Um, so yeah, again, sorry I, I screwed up the last bit of the video and you didn't get to see that footage of me finally figuring it out, but I think I got the gist of repairing one of these. So yeah, if you find one that doesn't work, don't be intimidated, give it a try. Again, thank you guys for watching. Um, as for this, the Dolby S, uh, I, I don't want to go too much into it because I don't know how much more I can add to it. Uh, Technomone, I believe that's how you pronounce it, he already did a really great video on Dolby S, and um, I will leave, have a link to that video in the description below, so I encourage you to watch it after this one to learn more about Dolby S and hear some of the direct recordings he did with it. It sounds uh, really nice, almost CD quality. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I might be doing more of these uh, audio equipment videos in the future as I put together kind of a retro-ish hi-fi system. Uh, so, yeah, again, I thank you all for watching. Uh, subscribe if you love this stuff. I appreciate your subscriptions. I appreciate you guys viewing. And, uh, again, I learned something new. Hope you guys did, too. So I'll see you in the next video.